Pistons fans, what's going on? It's your boy King, man. We just wrapped up the press conference with Troy Weaver with Monty Williams. They introduced Asar and Sasser. Very, very interesting points during the press conference. A lot of little key things said in that press conference that I think the Pistons fan base needs to listen to. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, I just want to give a, a huge thanks for everyone who joined the, the live draft party last night at the Sorry Negro Casino, man. We had an absolute blast. Um, you know, definitely, I, I mean, I can't give more thanks to Herman Moore and, and Team 84 for inviting me out to do a live show um, at the Sorry Negro. That was absolutely a blessing. Um, thank you to Greg Kelser, Morris Peterson, uh, Tim McCormick for all stopping by, man, and joining the stream and talking some Pistons uh, draft with us, man. That was an absolute blast. Thank you to my co-hosts, uh, you know, being my brother Willie, man, and, um, you know, downtown Deuce for coming out representing, man, and, and doing their thing. We did a, a pretty good job, I thought. So <laughs> with that said, um, we got to talk about the press conference. And, you know, the second selection I did not get to do unfortunately on the live because it was getting late um but when we did make that pick i instantly got chills because i knew that troy weaver was taking this franchise in the next direction the next step of the process which is the one that y'all know i love the most defense defense is the new thing for the detroit pistons that's where we are right now even when we go into free agency I think we bring a, a person in here who, who's good defensively on that perimeter. So um, whether we do some trading or not, free agency, I think that's the theme right now. Uh, something that I've definitely been harkening on. I was basing my draft predictions on that. So uh, it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that. Um, man, Asar, obviously defensive guy, athletic guy, uh, you know, can find teammates, cut, things like that. Uh, but running the floor is key. And these two players, they complement each other, man, because Sasser, not only being a guy on the offensive end that can create his own shot, um, on the defensive end, he gets steals, man, which creates opportunities for the Pistons to get in the open court and run the floor, which is great. They'll complement each other perfectly i believe that asar will start on the, the second unit um so he'll be a part of that second unit and sasser himself kind of gave the fan base a clue to what his role was which is he said himself uh being able to play with bigger guards we all know who that is right um and you know being able to create some shots man you know give some 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 points you know what i'm saying so space the floor and I think that's that was the theme from the beginning. I've seen Twitter going into rage and everything else about Killian, but they couldn't have been more wrong about that situation. If Killian moves on from the Pistons, it's not because we drafted Sasser. So uh, I just need the, 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 the fan base to understand that. Um, so with those two defensively, uh, that's a very pestering bunch. You know, you remember the pestering bunch that we had before, right? Lindsey Hunter. Mike James, um, but this is a different situation because Killian is a great passer on the offensive end, which he'll be able to find Asar on those cuts, which he, he'll be able to find Sasser. He's going to find, we know he'll find anybody if they're open or he'll help you get open. He'll guide you open. Um, so this is the game plan. This is the game plan. Um, and I think those two players will complement each other well going along with that second unit uh, with the Killian Hayes. Maybe Burks is at the three now. Um, the Pistons have a decision to make with Livers and Eugene, uh, some of the other names in the latter, but uh, we probably know that Diallo most likely won't be around. So um, 
I think that that fits well when you have two defensive guards, you have an absolute shooter in uh, Burks currently. And I'm just going off the current roster. The roster definitely can still transform. But with this current roster, you have a, a two punch on the defensive side of the ball when it, when it comes to the bench. But you have a guy who finds guys to get open, but you also have a guy that's a, a guy that's a playmaker, man, that can go out there and, and get points. Um, and then you have a SAR who's a SAR. Uh, you know, it was interesting. I believe that it was, uh, you know, one of our newer Piston beat writers, man. Shout out to Kool Aid and Corey Woods, by the way, Mike Curtis, all of the newer guys, the newer blood. Um, I think they asked, you know, the young guys if, you know, if you can choose things that you are good at and that you need to work on, what would that be, man? And Asar, Asar was like, uh, man, you know, shooting. <laughs> and he was like, but I'm a lot more confident than I was, you know, at a certain stage, especially when he's playing with the, uh, over there in, in the elite league. So, um, you know, already knowing and realizing what he needs to work on. I'm probably sure they had conversations with him even during a workout and the process that, hey, listen, that's something that you're going to eventually work on. But right now, we just need you to be who you are. Uh, when it comes to a guy like Sasser, there's not really much more that he can do at that size. Uh, he's he's 6'1". He's not 6'2". He's 6'1", probably six feet to be, on the, be honest. Um, it's a big guards lead. So being feisty, poking at the ball, getting the ball out, uh, playing in some passing lanes, that's what he can do. You know what I'm saying? We know he can play some, play some defense. Um, and creating his three-point shot, you know, a lot of step backs. And watch his highlights, man. He can definitely do that. Uh, he uses quickness. So it's not really much more that you can get out. He says that he wants to improve on rebounding. Not going to happen, man. Not going to happen. Uh, he could try. I, I won't knock anybody, but, you know, like I said, the NBA is a much bigger league. <laughs> it's a much bigger league, man. If you, you get caught buzzing around down there, they might try to swatch you. So uh, I commend the young man, though, man. I, I really like what I heard from both of them guys, man. And, and Troy Weaver, of course, taking this draft and saying, hey, I want to bring in Monty Williams type of guys. I don't think the fan base realized that Monty Williams – is the one that's trying to establish the defense. He did his own evaluation of the players. And there's a little bit of change of heart when it comes to certain situations. Um, Monty wants defense. And I'm probably sure as soon as he sat down and really started to evaluate this team, the first thing that he noticed is our glaring need for defense. We absolutely sucked <laughs> at playing defense, man. So we all know the situation with him and Aiden over there in Phoenix. You know, Aiden being soft, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't like that. So it puts me in the question to say, hey, you know, uh, guys like Wiseman, Bagley, they're going to have to show a lot more when it comes to defense if they want to be on this roster because he likes bigs that can go get it on the opposite side of the, the basketball court. We know that both of those guys are offensive-minded. So, um, yeah, you being an offensive-minded big is fine. But you have to be a presence. You're, you're a big for a reason. You know what I'm saying? You have to be a presence. You have to, you know, stop the other team from knifing us so much. So you can only get stabbed so much before you, you pass out and die. So um, that's just what it is, man. And he wants that defensive mindset. And it's what he wanted in Phoenix, but certain players just wouldn't give him that. Uh, they just wouldn't give it to him. He had some issues with Aiden. He had some issues with Crowder over there. Um, so a lot, some players just don't want to do it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happened uh, going into next season and who's around, uh, who survives that process. Summer League is going to be an interesting, man. It's definitely going to be an interesting thing. First of all, to see uh, who they allow to play. Uh, do you, you know, do you say, hey, we're not going to play this player or we're going to let him play one or two games? We've seen that before and then sit down. Um, but obviously, all eyes, all eyes will be on our current two draft picks. So it's going to be interesting when you look at uh, who they got us playing. <laughs> we're playing Orlando. Uh, we're playing the Spurs. We're playing Houston, who I absolutely hate. They are my nemesis team now. They already, you know, it was already, uh, uh, you know, the Jalen Green thing. You know, I had kind of let that go. You know what I'm saying? Let the kid live, right? But then you go out and you got two players on your team that I wanted on my team. It being Amen and Cam 
Cam Whitmore falling to Houston just pissed me off all together last night. I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to be honest with y'all. If any team I, did, I didn't want to see him go to, it was Houston. <laughs> it was Houston. Um, but, yeah, you know, crazy with the fall of him in the draft. But, obviously, it was for a reason. So, you know, like I said, I, I, I despise Houston so much. Uh, you know, no, no, no disrespect to the people in Houston. I know some people that live in Houston. Um, but uh, your team, I hate your team. I'm sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> it is what it is, man. Um, but it's going to be interesting to watch Summer League and see who plays, who's going to be available. Uh, the jury's still out on Wimby. I don't know about that situation. I got to look at the, the time frame of that, um, you know, when when the national, uh, you know, the national team will be going into what they're doing because Killian is going to be a part of that. He's going to be a part of that national team. So, uh, they still not even sure who all is playing that you don't we don't know if MB is going to participate on that French team so uh, we'll see what happened with that situation I got to look into that I just haven't so I'm not gonna sit here and act like I did um, so yeah but that's just some of the things from the press conference that I thought was real interesting um, but Troy Troy Reaver um, reiterating the fact that hey defense defense is the thing I love to hear that I love to hear that. You have to have balance. We just watched the Denver Nuggets win the championship, right? They are balanced. They are balanced, man. Golden State, when they were at range, they were balanced. Defensive guys, KCP, Bruce Brown, Pistons over there. Y'all know, you know what I'm saying? Some of the guys that, a long list of guys that we gave up on in like two or three years, so, um, or, or put in bad positions that they didn't need to be in. <laughs> so, um, that's the that's what we did in the past with these teams, put them in the correct roles. Uh, some of these guys had an opportunity to go other places and grow properly. And um, now look at them. They're, cha they're champions, man. So I just want the Pistons to continue to be patient. I know the fans rumble and grumble, but they always do. Be patient and continue to build the things that you need to do on this roster to bring this team together and have a balanced team that's going to be sustainable for a long period of time. That's what Troy Weaver wants. I want to see him continue to do that. Don't hit the panic button. I think they're pretty solid in, in what they're doing. I think Monty Williams also realizes that, hey, we're still some steps away before we really, really get competitive. That's why you have the contract like you have it, but also the options and the incentives in a, a eight to ninth year, um, that type of commitment tells me that Monty also understands uh, where the Pistons are currently. So we still have to develop Jalen Duran, um, Kay, uh, Kay Cunningham, and Ivy as our, our three uh, super key pieces in that core along with Isaiah Stewart. And I see Isaiah Stewart in a couple of the trade rumors out there. Not going to happen. They're keeping, they keeping Stewart here. He's a, a part, and he's been working his absolute ass off. He, he looks slimmer. He lost weight. Uh, but he's been working his ass off. There's plenty of evidence of that. We've seen him go and develop a three-point jump shot in one summer. That tells you the type of work ethic that he has, man. You know Ivy is working. You know K is working. So let's give these guys the opportunity to actually play together, which is we still haven't seen. That's crazy to say, right? We still haven't seen. Let's get them an opportunity to play together, and we'll go from there. So... Uh, with that said, man, just some of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, obviously, we'll be doing some more breakdowns with these guys. Um, you know, now that I've established yesterday where I've been behind the scenes, you, know, you got a, a glimpse of what I've been doing. So uh, I'm fully back into the mode now. and It feels good to be able to get back in front of this camera consistently. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, with that said, man. You guys have been great. Uh, leave it in the comments section. What do you think the Pistons can do uh, when it comes via trade or free agency? No NBA 2K type of stuff, man. To add some guys that's going to help this team out uh, defensively, some veterans, some solid veterans that's going to help this team out defensively and balance out things. Um, because, like I said, you got scoring on this team. Whether you want to believe it or not, you do. We just haven't had opportunity to see it together. So with that said, uh, leave it in the comments and 
I'll see you guys very, very soon in the next video. Peace. Wow. Black owned shoe stuff. Culture. culture. My culture, though. Culture, though. You see what they talk about in here. What's up, little dog? You good? Y'all got something here for me? I'm talking about exclusive. They got all the dunks? How many dunks they got? Something like these. Y'all got a little vibe in here. They buying shoes, selling shoes, sleep dude. It feels like the culture. They dunking on people. Oh, they doing TikTok. They looking out for the kids. Oh, man, this is great, man. Oh, they got all the races working here. here. It, it, it just, just really feels like, like the culture. culture. For a black owned shoe store to get some real drip at, come up here to Culture Detroit, man. That's what the streets been missing. Welcome home, fam.